Hello, we are live on YouTube. I'm just pulling up Instagram here. So we're going to be live on both. I am answering all your top questions on weight loss. And let's get started. So open up the chat and let's go. We are live on Instagram, on YouTube, and everywhere. I want to answer your top questions regarding weight loss. So your top questions, what you're feeling, how you're going about it. Do we need exercise? Like all the things. Because finding a way to achieve healthy weight loss and more importantly, maintain that healthy weight and lifestyle for many years to come is a life skill that we all need to achieve. I struggled with my weight as early as I can remember. It's so crazy. I like literally find every kid picture of me that you will see, you will see a kid struggling with her weight. This has never come naturally to me. I found one yesterday of me and my grandma together at a birthday party. And I'm just like clearly five times the normal size of a kid that age, you know, who is in a healthy weight range and doing gymnastics and doing basketball and all the things. I never did that stuff. I was so bogged down by my weight, my own unhealthy habits, my emotional eating and everything else. So come ahead, ask me all your top questions. This comes from Kayla. Tips for our, tips for overwhelmed by planning your meals. Great question. I think people get so in their heads and obsessed with perfection when it's all about consistency. Perfection has nothing to do with anything. People who will stigmatize a bottled salad dressing or a bottled marinade or a salad kit or a jarred marinara, like they don't get it. They don't get that it has to feel easy because if it doesn't feel easy, then it all falls apart. A lot of people get so overwhelmed about this ingredient and that ingredient. I get it. But you know what? You got to simplify it. Water first, veggies most. My program, I just break down for you. The food groups, what we want, what we want at each meal. Will every single meal be completely organic, home cooked and ultra delicious and fabulous? Not a chance, especially not when you're starting out, right? So you gotta be really open to frozen items, convenience items, frozen cauliflower rice, canned hearts of palm rice, like frozen shrimp or turkey meatballs, jarred marinara, whatever's going to keep you more consistent in the long term. And I always say like the only way to handle these like failed moments of, oh my God, my fridge is empty. What am I going to do? Is to be prepared by it, is to have the backups. So you always need backups because again, consistency over perfection. And that's the way it goes. Obviously I have loads of healthy, delicious recipes, but again, when you're in a pinch, when you're at a gas station, when you're in an airport, when you're at a restaurant in the Midwest that doesn't have a ton of options available for you, you still have to feel empowered. You still should never feel like, oh, it's all over. So my best tips for meal planning within the To Be Mindset Superblock, my program coming out in January that I'm so excited for you to start. We have a meal planning tool. I have a whole video on food prep like a pro, we call it, uh, with more tips. But a lot of it comes down to flexibility and an open mind. And then obviously all the tips I'm going to share with you. Uh, next question is, how to use food to lower your hemoglobin A1C? Food is the only way to lower a hemoglobin A1C unless you want to, you know, go to medication right away. But if you are someone who has been diagnosed with the gift of pre-diabetes, I say a gift because it's a warning light. It's not a diagnosis. It's honestly a privilege to be diagnosed with, with pre-diabetes. Look at so many people who are born with a, you know, a chronic innate, Im, you know, immune disorder or something that we don't have a cure for, or it's super rare and the treatment plan is bleak they would kill for something like a diagnosis that has tips that you can help prevent or reduce the risk of pro, you know, getting into a point where it's no return. Prediabetes, I have helped hundreds and hundreds of people with prediabetes reverse this diagnosis. It is a, a really amazing thing. 
that we started diagnosing people with prediabetes. We haven't been doing it forever. There was always, you know, you have normal blood sugar levels and you have diabetes. The beauty of having prediabetes or an elevated hemoglobin A1C, seeing that you have elevated blood sugars in the body, prediabetes is, okay, you're in this position where your blood sugars are higher than normal than they should be, but you're not quite yet diabetic. And in this vein of prediabetes, you can actually make large, impactful changes to completely reverse the diagnosis and go back into this safe, healthy place with your blood sugar levels. It really, really, really is incredibly impactful and absolutely doable. I've seen it time and time again. How can you do it? And of course, you know, there are, you know, other circumstances and there's always exceptions, but for the average person who doesn't have such a long-term medical history of diabetes or family history of diabetes. They've just been living in an unhealthy means for a long time and not choosing necessarily the right food and haven't been necessarily making healthy eating a priority. This is a person who can have a lot of luck and help in this situation. So how to help this person? Blood sugar control is actually not as complicated as a lot of people can make it. I think we've overcomplicated it because you know, we want to send people necessarily to quick fixes or pharmaceuticals quicker than they might need. Obviously, there is a need for those things. And I'm not diminishing that. And that can be helpful for a lot of people. But the foods you eat can make a massive impact on your blood sugar control. So literally, we have seen studies even just drinking lots of water, drinking water first prior to meals, drinking water throughout the day, we have seen helps swell the cells in a way where it helps them be active in forms and help reduce blood sugar in the body. We have seen taking walks after meals help reduce blood sugar in the body. We have seen pairing of foods, combining a carbohydrate food with a protein and a healthy fat and fiber helps reduce the blood sugar control in the body and helps reduce the spikes and keeps it more controlled and steady. So You absolutely can do it. A lot of it also comes down to the order in which you eat. We have seen numerous studies really validating the more sure model that I present within the 2B Mindset program in the order in which you start your meals, starting with water, loading up on veggies as your first bite, making sure you get protein in prior to eating that carbohydrate. And then if you want seconds or thirds and you're a volume eater like me, you'll learn the more sure model. But even the order in which you eat, we have seen play a amazing role in blood sugar control. Things like insulin sensitivity also for a lot of people who are interested. One of the only cures or remedies for insulin sensitivity and problems with this is actually weight loss. It's not even necessarily that we know it's a specific exercise or specific minutes of exercise or specific eating, but we know that weight loss in and of itself can help insulin sensitivity. So healthy weight loss with a healthy plan like the one that I can teach you and present within my program can absolutely help you reduce the risk of some of these issues. I'm not like promising that it's a cure-all for everything, but when people achieve healthy weight loss and learn how to eat healthily and learn how to drink a lot more water and eat more veggies and balance their meals and balance their plate with my method, we have unbelievable testimonials of the results that can happen as a result. So Again, always speak with your doctor and make sure that you're doing everything you need. But if you are ever diagnosed with an elevated hemoglobin A1C or elevated blood sugar levels and you're not yet diagnosed with diabetes, don't look at that as a failure. Look at that as a sense of empowerment that you can actually take control and make a massive improvement and in your health. And sometimes for a lot of people, knowing that diagnosis of prediabetes is what you know, triggers this unbelievable sense of motivation in their health and their well-being. And I've seen people really change their lives in a very positive and impactful way with having that diagnosis. So again, nobody wants a diagnosis, but in the event of an elevated hemoglobin A1C and prediabetes, look at it as like, wow, this might be something that I actually can control and I can improve and I can actually reverse, which is a beautiful thing. Um, Next question. Lots of questions on ozempic and semiglutides. Okay. So you know, you'd think that I would have a reduction in how many private clients I've received and so forth with the introduction of ozempic and semiglutide. However, what's fascinating is while they've gotten a lot of media attention in the last nine months, 
there are a lot of people who've been using this stuff for at least a year to two years. Um, I have some private clients in the healthcare field who are kind of like higher ups in the healthcare field who have already tried it, been unsuccessful for a myriad of reasons. So some reasons are, and I'm not dissing this because again, we have a big issue of obesity and weight control within the United States, within the UK and, and growing sadly kind of like all over the world. So I am always down for help, but I will say with these medications, I am now in lots of conversations privately in private clients with people who have already tried these things. I've spoken to two people who had their gallbladders removed. I spoke to one person who was so sick and nauseous, like couldn't get out of bed. Um, two of those. I have spoken to people who have lost the weight, but then also lost a ton of muscle mass. And the second they stopped medication, they gained the weight back very quickly because of the lack of muscle mass. It also then suppressed their metabolism. So is there a space for some of these medications potentially for people who qualify and just to give them like a head start in a way, potentially, but it's never going to replace the need for acquiring a healthy lifestyle and relationship with food. And so I have been in the weight loss field as a registered dietitian who's lost 100 pounds and has been counseling you know, thousands and thousands of people through my To Be Mindset program with my book, with my upcoming, um, I'm very excited to help even more people with my upcoming To Be Mindset super block starting in January. And, you know, there is always, always in the last 10 years, we've had gastric bypass, ruin why there's been the band, there's been so many other medications. I mean, people are and doctors will still sub, like prescribe fen, 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 and like all these other things. There are medications on the market that's never going to be replaced that's never going to change but what is the long-term solution nobody wants to be taking a medication every single day you have to be figuring out how to change your mindset how you look at food how you approach food what you do in the event of self-sabotage of hunger deciding is it hunger or is it habit when someone gets off these medications, because yes, they might help suppress hunger in a way. What do you do with that influx of hunger? Do you always respond to it? Because I will show you in the 2B Mindset Super Block in my upcoming program, there are six kinds of hunger. If every time you sense a feeling of hunger, which I'll help you define within the program, like, and we constantly respond to it, insight in stomach, there's never, we're never going to achieve long-term success in our health and our mind and our body and so forth. So yes, these medications exist. Yes, surgeries exist. But again, like I have so many people within even our to be mindset ecosystem with people who've lost, you know, weight with my program who have had these surgeries, but I've experienced weight regain from them. So my goal in life is not just to help people lose weight. Honestly, that's the easy part of my job. Helping people lose weight is the easy part of my job. You know, you watch the to be mindset videos, you're gonna, if you've never done that, you'll start January 1st with the to be mindset super block. You'll watch the videos, you'll learn to lose weight. The unique part of my job that I actually love and I get a kick out of and I enjoy because I'm truly a specialty in the field is maintaining that weight, is preventing weight regain. If you're watching this, you've probably lost weight a million times. Like, you know, this diet, that thing in the past, this program, that you know you can do. The fear of why you're maybe not motivated to get started again is because you gain the weight back and it feels so crushing afterwards. So there are probably a lot of people sharing in this chat that they've lost weight with the 2B mindset and they've actually kept their weight off. I just spoke to two women last week who lost over 50 pounds in their 50s and have kept it off. We have a woman who's lost over 200 pounds. We have several like dozens of people who've lost over 100 pounds of the program. It's amazing because they did it while eating while eating satisfying foods, while not feeling deprived, while not calorie counting, while not restricting. But the most amazing thing is that they kept it off. And and when you can keep the weight off, that's, that is the power for me. Those are the testimonials I like to share. It's not just the people who lost weight, the people who've kept it off. And there are a lot of people who've done my program and have also experienced some weight regain. Life is hard. You know, life is hard. There are like, I mean, talking to clients all week, every week, having lots of calls. I spoke to a couple people in the past month who've lost a lot of weight with my program, had a lot of success, but it could be 
a death in the family. It could be COVID. It could be the movement. I spoke to a doctor. I have a new doctor. She went from being on her feet to a remote job. She's sitting all day. Like that's a big change. Um, a new, like, Found appreciation for alcohol or having kids who are picky eaters and catering to all their food and not yourself or caring for an elderly. Like life is tough. Life is tricky, but life never gets easier. We have to get stronger. So our relationship with food, how we see food, how we monitor our success, how we keep ourselves consistent is the fundamental principle that I'm obsessed with helping you with, which is why I'm so excited for my upcoming To Be Mindset Super Block because how it's structured differently than my base To Be Mindset program is it's a four week program where every day you're having a video. So you're not only improving your relationship with food and losing weight and, and getting and learning all the education on what to do in self-sabotage and what to do in those moments where you say, F it, I just want to eat it. And what to do when you're faced with food pushers or these social events, or when you just have to order takeout, not only are you going to be getting those lessons, but when you actually do the to be mindset super block on this day-to-day -day cadence that we've created four weeks, five videos a week, they're only five to 10 minutes each. They're quick, they're snappy, but you're gonna wake up, you're gonna watch them. It's gonna also create the habit and routine that you can keep up for life. And you could obviously keep you know, repeating it month after month as you hit your goal and keep it off. Um, next question. There aren't a lot of questions. A lot of people just talking about it. Um, look at this. Nanette writes in, I was diabetic using insulin for 10 years and I had high blood pressure medicine. With the 2B mindset, my weight loss and nutrition program, I am 50 pounds down and no more insulin nor any medications within one year. Nanette, thank you for sharing your story. It is so important that we share our stories, that we share that it's possible because who is the number one advertiser of television commercials? Pharmaceutical companies. We are in a day and age and I'm not against pharmaceuticals. There is a need for them. There is they are there to help us. It is one of the reasons why our lifespan has increased while our lifestyles have become so much less healthy, right? So like there is, I'm not just bashing pharmaceuticals. I understand there's a space for them, but they are not necessarily a permanent solution. And for some people with some debilitating diseases that we don't even have a better cure for, that might be possible. But when it comes to some of the top issues in America, when it comes to cholesterol, when it comes to blood sugar management, like there is a lot, even people who are now experiencing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, there are sleep apnea, plantar fasciitis. There are so many conditions in the body, asthma that we experience that can be improved by having and experiencing a healthy weight loss, changing the foods you eat. And honestly, just reducing the weight we carry on our body can drastically help make improvements to so many of our body functions. Um, and it's amazing. That's, I mean, obviously like the before and after seeing people like women in their fifties, you know, post pictures in bikinis and tag me to them. Like that's all lovely. And I love to see it, but it's the change in the way you're confident with your spouse in bed at night and, and ability to chase the kids and ability to even so many people write to me that it helped with their fertility, it helps with their medication use. Like that is the power of this program. That is why you have to do it. Not just for the vanity piece and losing weight by summer and all that stuff, because you will get that. We're starting January 1st, it's a Monday, 2024, it's amazing. But it, it's, the, it's the improvement of your health and energy and confidence and relationship with food and how you see yourself that I want you to experience every day along the way. Um, and uh, okay, yes. There's so many people saying here that they feel empowered. Um, Iceland is saying, I lost 36 pounds while going through menopause in 2020 during COVID and kept it off using the to be mindset principles. This is someone who lost 36 pounds through menopause and through COVID. Thank you for sharing your story. It is so important. Um, and, and next question comes from Maria. Maria saying, can you do some Mexican food, please? Okay, so... We have a lot of family in Mexico. We have like tons of cousins in Mexico. Um, I do not grow up with that background, but my husband does. My husband's, you know, grandmother, born and raised, she passed away now, um, born and raised in Mexico. His whole side has, you know, Mexican 
genes and everything and lineage and the food is amazing. I love it. I didn't really eat a lot of it as a kid, but moving to Southern California and marrying into this family, I am definitely embraced by it. Also just counseling a lot of clients within Southern California. I am definitely familiar with this population and I love them and they're, you know, so fun and full of life and amazing. The food, I'll say, Mexican food is on the trickier sides of food in that it's so delicious, but in that, you know, taquitos and nachos and burritos, you know, a lot of it is fried, first of all, and just very carb laden. So we definitely have that in that food within the Chubby Mindset Superblock, my upcoming weight loss and nutrition program, four week plan that starts January 1st. We do a whole series on takeout, ordering from a menu at a restaurant and without, and we do a whole series on how to navigate the chimichangas, the nachos, and the taquitos, and we go through all the cuisines and how to navigate them. So I understand it is tricky. We definitely need to prioritize when we're eating fried food because fried food has to always be seen as a treat, not a cheat, but a treat, right? So when it becomes a very much part of a meal and a cuisine, we have to navigate it more strategically. There is a great Mexican restaurant in Los Angeles that I love going to, and they have the world's best salsa that they're fire roasting the salsa. Like it is all made right there. And the guacamole, I always ask them, like, I always ask the waiter super kindly, super gently, can you please bring a plate of whatever veggie you have in the back? Carrots, celery, cucumbers, whatever you have in the back. Can you just bring me a plate of it? They're like, sure, like whatever we have. I'm like, literally whatever you have, not have to be fancy. And this great restaurant literally brought me carrots and celery. And I so happily enjoyed them with the guacamole, not feeling left out at all. Still get that crispy crunch, still get the delicious guacamole. Yeah, sure, I could have a few chips at the table, but that's not necessarily what I want to be filling up at the start of my meal before my entree comes. Because there are a lot of studies to suggest when we start our meal with carbs, we will very much likely eat more carbs at the meal and eat more overall. Do you ever ask yourself, why do restaurants give me free chips and free bread at the start of the meal. Isn't that contradictory? Don't they want me to spend a lot of money and order as much food as possible? Why are they filling me up on free bread and chips? The answer is because studies have shown that when you start your meal with the carb, it actually expands your appetite. It can actually make you feel hungrier. So when you start with carbs and meal, which is super traditional and like Jewish customs and Italian customs and Mexican customs to start with all these things, it will very much like you make you want an extra side, want to order more carbs at the meal that have a higher profit margin, right? Like if you start with bread at the meal, that's free. But now that kind of pushes you away from getting the salmon and broccolini and more towards getting the fettuccine, that restaurant's probably going to make a lot more money on you. Because while the fettuccine is $18 and the salmon dish is 26 that salmon might cost them 13 bucks versus that fettuccine is probably costing them under five. So the profit margin for carb-based meals at a restaurant is super high. I just found out there's a restaurant shout out in Venice called Scopa or Scola that I want to try where they're actually doing handmade pasta. Do you know how rare that is? I'd say probably 5% of restaurants that serve pasta in the United States or less are actually making their own pasta. Super often, it's just a box of generic pasta or barilla. So yes, it might be tempting to start the meal with that bread, with that butter, with that the chips, and they're not off the table. With my program, you can eat them, you can be satisfied, you can be successful, you can lose all the weight, you can keep it off, you can, there's no food off limit. It's not about restriction. It's about knowledge being power when you act on it. And taking these little steps to ask the waiter, is there any way you can bring veggies with the dip so I can eat it happily and enjoy? can make a massive difference in how you feel that night and how you experience the restaurant and how you want to stay consistent the next day and not look at it as a fail that now you, you know, have to wait a month or a year to get back on track. All of that is out the window. Please, even if you don't start my program on January 1st, which you absolutely should, just have more reasonable expectations of yourself. You know, we have a video within the program called All or Nothing, right? Just how to navigate that all or nothing thinking. And that is 
the power of this program. My program coming out on January 1st, yes, I'm going to break down the fundamentals. You're going to learn what to eat, when to eat, how to do it, even at a restaurant, even at social events, even when you have crazy cravings. Fine. But it's that inner working of changing your mindset and how you see failure, how you see everything, how you see waking, how you see eating the things that you didn't plan to eat, like, and staying consistent, consistency over perfection. Again, it's not a miracle or a brilliance of any program that helps you lose weight. If a medication or a fad diet or something helps you lose weight in the past, it's okay. It's not great. And the problem is a lot of people, when they gain the weight back, they blame themselves. Blame the program or the diet or the thing that set you up for an unsustainable weight loss. I like to talk sustainability from the start. Everything I want to instruct you to do in order to lose weight, I want it to be that you can keep it off. I've kept my weight off for a decade now. Does it? Does the weight go up and sometimes I bring it down? Sure, but I go right back to the plan and it works. It just works. And it's worked for so many of us. And I'm so grateful to now expand it to help more of you who have never experienced it now in a really cool way with this four-week daily insight. So it really becomes a habit and routine. Um, next question. I'll take one last question. Thoughts on MCT oil in smoothies? What a great question to kind of like end on. MCT oil? Great. It could be healthy for your heart and so forth. We eat enough fat as a society. We don't have to start sneaking it into smoothies. You know, putting whole avocados in smoothies and so forth. I'm talking to someone who has weight to lose. If you're someone who is like super lean weight, super athletic, you are, you're into this like um, four hour body type of thing and you're like in this mode of I want to put coconut oil in my smoothie and you know I achieved healthy weight control. Now I just want best brain health. Go to town. If you're someone who's struggling with their weight, you probably like to eat like I like to eat. We don't have to start sneaking oil in our food. We want to take that oil and have it crisp up our roasted broccolis or air fried potatoes or something like that and actually eat it and enjoy it. So no reason to start sneaking stuff like that in. You know, you can you can use the MCT oil to make a dressing, to make a sauce, to make a dip. Sneaking it in and just pouring coconut oil in your drink is is, is super silly. Um, someone saying my dad has non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Sadly, that's become super common. It didn't even exist. When I went to college initially to become a registered dietitian, that wasn't a thing. Fatty liver meant you were you suffered from alcoholism. That was the reason why we saw fatty liver clinically, because our fat accumulation as a society has become so severe. We have found that essentially, especially our central adiposity, like our central collection of weight, which is highly tied to other behaviors of weight gain in addition to stress, we have seen that now having an extra amount of this subcutaneous fat surrounding our organs, including our liver, is actually like leaching fat into our vital organs like our liver and creating what we now have a clinical term for, which is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This is, again, something that can be very similar to a diagnosis like prediabetes in that it can be highly treated and even in a lot of cases prevented with a healthy weight loss. Healthy weight loss is a beautiful thing. I have been celebrating it my whole life because I struggled my whole childhood. I was miserable and I found a positive way to approach weight loss where I never counted calories, I never restrict, I never skipped meals. I never made myself crazy. I never had to obsess over exercise or anything. It has been the best gift that has allowed me to wear the clothes I want, not have to take the medications I don't want, be able to be there for my kids and run after them and, and feel healthy and vibrant so I could actually help more people in my family or elsewhere who need me. It is a gift. And if you've been in this place of like, demonizing weight loss because you've only experienced it in an unhealthy fashion, I beg you to have an open mind and try my program on January 1st. You can unlock it today. You can you can have all, get ready, get all the tools you need. January 1st, it's a Monday, let's go. If you're gonna be traveling then and you don't know what to do, then you can start on January 8th. 
You can honestly start any day you want. It's a four week design and you, and I recommend starting on a Monday because it kind of is structured like a Monday to Friday. And then you have all the tools you need for the weekend success. But I do recommend changing your mindset and at least being open-minded to experiencing a healthy weight loss. Because at the end of the day, we all have to figure it out. You know, at the end of the day, we all have to learn how to walk. We all have to learn to do things. Having a healthy mindset with food and learning how to eat in a way that fuels our body, makes us feel good, and in a lot of ways keeps us out of the hospital is critical. So if you haven't achieved it yet, that is okay. That's normal. That's fine. Sadly, it's normal. It's normal in our society today. But it's just the start for you. It is just the start for you. And you might be 45 or 35 or 55. It's okay. Again, I know I was just talking to two women who lost 50 pounds in their 50s, and they are glamas coming through. Like they are ready to take on the next chapter of their lives. It is never too late to get it together. So forget that. Give up all the blame, shame, or guilt about what brought you to where you are today. None of that matters. Throw it out the window. Come into my new To Be Mindset Super Block with an open mind. January 1st, I hope you start. If you start January 8th or at a time when you're back from travels and you're ready, that's fine too. But know that it's possible for you, like all the people that have been on here and know it's possible. Um, can you reverse fatty liver disease? I have seen it firsthand. Okay. Speak with your doctor, look into the research. It, you know, people having elevated liver enzymes as a result of having extra subcutaneous fat in their stomach region, who then go into a journey of healthy weight loss, have drastically improved their liver enzymes and their other signs and symptoms of fatty liver disease. It is possible, it can be reversible. And you should be open to that possibility. And you should speak with your doctor about that possibility. And even if you have conditions that are maybe not able to be reversed because of prolonged unhealthy habits or behaviors or carrying around excess weight, there are so many other things that can improve. You're preventing sleep apnea, the, your ability to walk, joint pain, inflammatory issues throughout the body that can be improved. So. These diagnoses are not isolated. They're a whole. They're signs of an overall lifestyle. So yes, maybe, you know, you're going to be taking a medication for your arteries, but are you potentially preventing all these others? Very likely. So getting a healthy relationship with food and your body and your weight loss and actually enjoying weight loss and making it a fun motivating, cool, enjoyable experience is the best feeling in the world. And the only thing better than that is sharing it with others. So get ready, get started. I'm, I'm so excited for you. And I can't wait for you to get started and everyone here to get started because it's going to be amazing. January 1st, let's go. Let's go. You got this. You're going to do great.